Well, after I just uploaded my video about Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash, a ton, a ton of you commented and wanted me to make a video about David Dobrik possibly enabling these two. So that's what we're here to do. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So I'm trying something different. Some of you know that I've had audio issues, so I'm doing a little, a little Leon Lush right now, and I'm holding my mic right here. Hello everybody, and welcome back to a brand new gluttony-induced myocardial and my name is Leon Lush, and I am filled with glee that you would be so kind to spend a few minutes here with me today. Because I think it helps get rid of some of the echo until I figure something else out. But anyways, I have a Patreon if you want to go sign up and help me get some new audio equipment, but uh, <laughs> or at least a mic stand, I don't know. But anyways, yeah, let's talk about this. So I just made a video saying I'm worried about... Jason Nash and Trisha Paytas. I got a ton of requests to talk about their relationship. And I mentioned in that video, you know, that it kind of seemed like maybe David Dobrik is enabling them, but it also seems like he gives them some like real talk. So a lot of you requested this video. So a couple disclaimers real quick. The first one is, if you're new to my channel, my channel isn't for David Dobrik. My channel isn't for Trisha Paytas. My channel isn't for Jason Nash. It's for you. Okay, so if you can relate to this situation, like a lot of people wanted me to make this video because they are the David Dobrik in this situation. They have friends who are in toxic relationships and they don't know what to do. So remember, this isn't necessarily about them. If you wanna comment about their relationship in the comments, go ahead, do your thing, baby. But this is to try to help you if you have friends who are in a toxic relationship like this. Now, the second disclaimer is this. And I just thought about this before making the video. So like a lot of this, these suggestions I'm gonna give and everything like that for you is based on if this is affecting your mental health, okay? So like in David Dobrik's situation, if it is not affecting his mental health, then who cares? Like do your thing, man. If this is not affecting you, if Jason coming over and complaining to you about Trisha all the time is not affecting you, if it is not emotionally draining to you, do your thing. Some people are wired like that. Like some people can take that stuff in, listen to it, laugh it off, do whatever. But for some of us, like if you have somebody who keeps coming to you with the same problem over and over and over and over and over again, it's time to set up some boundaries, all right? So that's my other disclaimer. So if you're in this situation, you have friends who are in toxic relationships and it is not affecting you mentally or emotionally, that's cool, don't even worry about it. But maybe share this video with someone who it is affecting, all right? So anyways, when I was watching the new Jason Nash video where they were talking about this situation where Jason almost called the cops on Trisha and everything, like David's laughing the whole time. David's laughing and Jason made a comment earlier in the video like, you're just gonna use this for one of your bits and da 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 da, right? And I, I was kinda like, eh, well, like is Jason like, or is uh, David like enabling this behavior because it's good for his vlogs or you know, whatever. But I remember like, so those of you who don't know, David Dobrik and Jason Nash have a uh, a podcast together called Views. And it's interesting because my girlfriend, Tristan, she doesn't listen to any podcast. She hates podcast. And she listens to Views all the time with David Dobrik and Jason Nash. But here's what's even crazier. She's not even like a diehard David Dobrik or Jason Nash fan, but for some reason she loves that podcast. But anyways, anyways, that's besides the point. It's a good podcast, it's funny. I actually like Jason a lot more in the podcast than when I see him in this toxic relationship with Trisha. But anyways, I remember a while back, around the time when I made my first, one of my first videos about Jason Nash and Trisha Paytas, they they did a, a, a podcast and like David Dobrik was given Jason tough love. Like, if you wanna know, okay, so a lot of you are coming here asking like, what do you do? Like, what do you do if, you know, your friends are in a toxic relationship? Like, David Dobrik, like, was like the, the best, like, in that podcast. I'm gonna try to find it and link it down below, but what David Dobrik did, like, that's how you talk to a friend in a relationship. Well, first of all, let me recap. Jason and Trisha had a brutal breakup on the internet like like the most public breakup you could ever have nothing was private not a single thing was private 
Um, and and it's and it's. Well, that's not true. That's not true at all. There was Come lots on. of things that were private. I mean, and I didn't think it was that brutal at all. I thought Jace. she was pretty. I thought Jace. what went on was. I... <laughs> Well, uh, what? Uh, no, I mean, how would you know what was well, private I know that and there what wasn't, wasn't? A lot private, which makes me. I mean, if the, I'm sure there was more things in private, but the the that was public sure. should have been private, and I just think it was. I mean, I mean, I. I, I mean, uh, that's Jason, your opinion. She titled I mean. the video, "He broke up with me because I'm fat." That's a pretty. That's a pretty brutal thing to say about another, about another person. You know what I mean? That's like a news headline. Like he was constantly calling Jason out on his BS, right? Like, here's the thing, like, honesty is a huge part of mental health. Denial will kill you, okay? So like, I, a, a lot of my mental health is based on me constantly working on my self-awareness, right? You, me, a lot of us who struggle with mental health issues, we're the type of person who lies to ourselves and tell, says everything's fine, or we minimize things, and, we don't understand why we're so upset. Well, we need, we either A, need self-awareness or B, we need people in our lives to call us out on our crap, right? So Jason Nash in that first podcast that I'm talking about, he kept telling David like, oh, you know, it's not that bad. It's not that, and David's, and David's like, no, it is. This is nuts. This is crazy. This is not healthy. This, you know what I mean? So this is why I tell you guys to keep people around who tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. So I guess that's one of one of my tips for you, if you have friends in these types of relationships, like don't, don't play into their BS. Do not do that. Like I've mentioned, I had a friend who was in a toxic relationship for t two years, maybe more than two years. And she would tell me about how terrible the relationship all, was all the time. And I would ask her like, why do you post this on uh, social media? Like everything's all unicorns and rainbows. And she would tell me, she, she wants people to think that they have a good, healthy relationship. She wants her parents to think they have a good, healthy relationship. And this is why I keep trying to teach you guys to quit caring so much about what other people think. Like on my last video, I just did about Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash. I asked you guys, I asked you guys in the comments, how many of you have stayed in a relationship way too long waiting for the other person to change? Well, here's a follow-up. How many of you have stayed in a relationship way too long because you were worried about what your friends would say? You were worried about what your parents would say? Like, I've seen people stay in a toxic relationship because they don't want their friends to make fun of them. They, want, they don't want them to say, oh, oh, look, you just got into another bad relationship. Or, oh, you're like the breakup king or breakup queen. Like, who cares? Would you rather would you rather them like poking fun at you or sitting in a toxic relationship for months or even years, all right? So anyways, in this new video, David's like laughing, kind of doing it, but like, I kind of see David in the same light as I saw Shane Dawson at the end of his Jake Paul series, where Jason just kind of like listens and he, in his brain, he's analyzing it and he knows it's a bunch of BS. He knows it's all wrong, he knows it's BS. And like, I can, I can definitely relate to David because I'm the type of person like, I call people out on their stuff, but I try to do it in a lighthearted way, right? Like, if somebody's acting crazy, like, I'll laugh and joke with them about it, but like, I'm I'm really like giving them like, hey, you know, like, you need to identify this because like, it's not, it's not normal. Like when David was like, okay, yeah, so you guys like, this isn't good, right? So I don't, I don't think David is enabling them, but he did mention like later on, like this isn't healthy, this isn't good or anything like that. But if you're somebody who's, who has friends like this, like, here's what I'll say, here's what I'll say. If it's affecting your mental health, if, you're, if your friend is calling you up constantly, telling you about their terrible relationship and they're not willing to do anything about it, you gotta draw a boundary, you got to. I keep telling you guys over and over and over again, quit being an emotional banker for other people's problems. Like, stop it, stop it. Like, I'm here to help. Those of you who know me, you know that I am here to help. I'm here to listen, I'm here to reply to your comments and stuff like that. But if you keep coming to me with the same problems and refuse to do any type of solution, then I don't got time for you. And you, and, and it sounds rough, but you gotta do the same thing with your friends. I have friends who consistently get in bad relationships and then think they're gonna be able to turn to me. And I've cut those people out. Or if I haven't cut them out, I don't talk to them about their relationships anymore. Like, cause I, that does affect my mental health. Like I threw that disclaimer at the beginning of the video, but these things do affect my mental health. When I have people who are constantly complaining to me and refusing to get into the solution, that's just something that I can't handle. That's something I can't deal with. It frustrates me, it angers me. It's something that I, it, it's, it's brutal. Like, 
at my job, in my career, I can deal with that. These are clients, you know what I mean? But when there's people in my life and I can control like whether or not I pick up their phone calls, answer their texts or their DMs or their messages, no. Like I set up boundaries with them and I say, listen, I'm no longer going to sit here and listen to you complaining about your problem if you refuse to get into the solution. And that's what I suggest of you too. This can go even to like a job, right? Like let's say you have somebody who, a friend of yours who's always complaining to you about a job, right? Always complaining about their job. And then you, you ask them, to try to get them solution focused, you say, okay, have you been looking for a new job? And they're like, no. Okay, then quit complaining to me about your job if you're refusing to look for a new one, right? Like I'm here to help you and strategize and stuff because like the excuse for the job thing I hear all the time is like, I'm constantly working so I can't look for another job. I'm like, no, 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 no. You go home, you binge watch Netflix, you scroll through Instagram for three hours, take one of those hours and start looking for jobs and filling out applications. Like don't give me any of that BS. I'm one of the busiest people that I know. So if you ever try to come to me with some, you know, like you don't have time thing, I will laugh in your face. This is my third video today and I'm in the middle of writing a book. So so be be careful and tread lightly when you try to tell people that you don't have time to get into the solution, right? Like Another thing is too, like when people tell me that they don't have time to meditate and I tell them that they only have to meditate for five minutes, like meditate in the damn shower, you know what I mean? But like again, this is for all of you who have friends who are getting into toxic relationships. Set up boundaries with them. Set it up like as a friend, it is your job it is your responsibility to be there for them and support them and help direct them to solutions, give them suggestions. But if they are not taking those suggestions, there is very little to nothing you could do. Like when I made my video yesterday about is Amberlynn Reed a lost cause? I don't think she is. But if she's not willing to do the work, then there's not much anybody can do for her. And that's one of the things about um, being like mentally ill or having any kind of mental health issues. It takes the person's willingness, all right? So I hope this video provided you with some good suggestions. And you know, the I, I guess I'll end with this. The most common excuse I get from friends in this scenario is, well, I can't, I can't cut them out of my life. They're my friend. I can't, like, you need to go watch the video I did about uh, Logan Paul being a terrible brother. Like, the hell you can't. The hell you can't. I have had to cut best friends out of my life for drug addiction, alcohol addiction, them being toxic, starting fights, starting drama, whatever it is. I've done it a million times. There's a difference between can't and won't. In my last video I, um, about T-Series, I talked about internal locus of control and external locus of control. Get the internal locus of control and realize you can set boundaries. The reality is, is that you're uncomfortable setting boundaries. That I can hear, that I can work with, that I can give you some strategies for, but never, ever, ever, ever tell me you can't set up boundaries. I was reading a comment on the last video. I think there was a few comments saying that they're in a relationship and they said, I tried to leave three times, but I can't. And by the way, I don't know the specifics of this situation, but when I hear that, when I hear the word can't, I'm like, okay, like, are you locked in a dungeon? Like, what, what is happening? Is this person holding you hostage? Because I think a lot of us get twisted, especially with boundaries, the difference between can't and won't, all right? Like, I really want you guys to think about that, okay? Really, really think about that. All right, but anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge thank you to everybody who is supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And again, I'm holding a mic. If you wanna help me get a new mic stand, come become a patron, even for a buck, even just a little dollar a month. You know what I'm saying? All right, but anyways, thanks so much for watching. Set up some boundaries and I'll see you next time.